So guys, shall we start? Okay, let me share my screen. Do, 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 do. Okay. Share. So, please tell me guys, do you see my screen? Okay. Okay. So guys, what about my screen? Do you see it? Can you see it? Do you see it well? Yep, I do. Cool, 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 guys. Yeah, it's enough. It's enough. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Don't follow the chat. Okay, so shall we start? Learn to use Postgres for real. Yeah, so who am I? My name is Boris Popovsky. Hello, guys. I'm from Kishinev, Moldova. I'm working on Pentalog company. On a position as a GoLang developer, I'm in a software development for five, six years maybe. Uh, I prefer to to use to use open source and to, to put something in out in open source. So I'm at Elasticsearch. All the libraries for Go, for PHP contributor. Um, I am the Zen, Zen framework two contributor because in my past I was a PHP developer. Uh, also a Doctrine ORM contributor or, um, and things like that. So just take in consideration <laughs> before you will ask the difficult questions. I have a karate practice in there for 14 years. Yeah, just don't forget about that. So what about the Postgres? Uh, Postgres user for five years. I really love Postgres. For me, Postgres is the best open source free database because the second the best database is Oracle and it's not free at all. So yeah, I'm a little bit of MySQL hater, but it's not the topic of our webinar today. So I just promise not to <laughs> hate too much MySQL in that webinar. So I really prefer the SQL way. So I'm a little bit SQL evangelist, so. And no SQL, yeah, it's just fine. No complaints, no offense. So what this webinar is not about. Uh, first of all, we will not compare the databases MySQL and Postgres uh, or something like that, uh, DB2 or Oracle DB, no. And that's not the topic. So we will also not compare NoSQL and SQL because it's just separated domains. And no, it's not interesting for us today. Okay, we will not discuss PostgreSQL PostgreSQL query optimization because, because why you can ask me? Because I haven't plans uh, the three part of webinars I want to make series like you know saga about the Postgres, yeah. So uh, the first one will be beginner's guide with the introduction in the Postgres unique feature. All you need to know about the Postgres to back then, later to optimize your queries and to understand the Postgres inside. That's why we also will not discuss the uh, buffer size or things like that, the cache, the how Postgres interact with uh, uh, Linux kernel or something like that. But in the part three, we obviously will discuss it because it's important to, to query optimization. So what this webinar is about? Yeah, we will talk a little bit about the Postgres user roles model. Not too much because it's, it's more about for DBAs to manipulate roles and users. Uh, we will talk a lot about the Postgres SQL DB structure because it's a little bit unique for SQL. 
Also, I will show all my uh, live coding session will be shown in a data grip uh, module for IntelliJ IDEA, but also you can download from IntelliJIDEA.com website the full data grip ID. It's a, an ID for uh, databases. You can find their uh, adapters for Oracle, MySQL, or DB2, wherever you want. Also, we will discuss the Postgres features, obviously. So, and I hope you will, <laughs> you will increase your knowledge like that. So, ready? Let's start, guys. So, first of all, uh, I am the macOS user. Sorry for that, uh, Linux guys. So, uh, I'm gonna show all in a Mac way, but you're gonna, you should do the lines the comment like this, I will copy it and paste, paste it to the chat for more convenience for you. But yeah, actually it's pretty much the same. Uh, as a macOS user, we will install the app and app inside have uh, all those libraries. So just don't worry. Uh, after the installation steps, all will be the same. For Mac OS, Linux, no much difference. So, we will visit the Postgres app. So, Mac OS users, please. Oh, sorry. Another language. Postgres app. Uh, it calls postgresapp.com. I also can copy this link. No, not to open it. Sorry, guys. Okay, okay, what's going on? You know, it will be not a live coding session without a fail. So <laughs> I get one <laughs> on the first seconds. Super, just brilliant. So Postgres stuff, I will not copy it. It's dangerous for me. So I will download it. It's pretty much simple. We need to wait a little bit. So Linux guys, by the way, if you have some question during installation, don't be shy, ask them. So uh, I will explain a little bit what we are doing here for Linux. We install the PostgreSQL uh, main major library. We install Postgres client to interact it uh, with TCP. And we install the Postgres Contrib uh, library. It, con it contains a lot of cool stuff, like uh, uh, a lot of cool stuff, trust me, uh, to, to manipulate your DB. So, download, download. Yep, I'm still waiting, sorry. By the way, oh, we have questions. Yeah, uh, the current version is 10.2, I suppose, but 9.6 is also okay. Don't worry. We will discuss the major features they are implemented, I probably in the version 8.6 or something like that. So, so they will definitely be in your 9.6 version. So don't worry. Okay. Yeah. Just uh, fantastic, but we somehow have a really slow internet speed. Why? I don't know. So, by the way, how many participants do we have? 52, yeah, nice guys. Thank you for visiting us. Yep, so make yourself comfortable, grab maybe a cup of tea or coffee. So, take a seat. We'll have a fun with Podgers. Yeah if my app will be downloaded. Uh, 
So guys, so Linux guys, or maybe Mac OS guys, how is your progress? Do I achieve to <laughs> download the file? <laughs> because I don't know why, but my internet connection speed is really slow. Oh, Windows, sorry, I just forget about Windows. Yeah, sure. I am <laughs> I'm pretty much sure that there's a lot of Windows application but uh, as I know from version 2 on Windows you probably can use the uh, bars or also the the shell uh, I don't know the Linux kernel in the Windows and use so this that command for Linux uh, where is it uh, da, 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 here Sorry, I really forget about the windows. Yeah, <laughs> my bad. Okay. But we can Google it. Okay. Yes. So thank you guys. I don't know if if everyone sees those those links, so I will just copy it and paste. So the guys just found the Postgres app for Windows. Cool. Yeah, in my my app just a few seconds until it will be downloaded. So So, till you are waiting for my brilliant app will be downloaded. Uh, everyone, uh, which, which of you received the email with the link on our cloud system with the database dump. So just be prepared to import it. Okay, just uh, just try to remember when where you stored it. Yeah, or if you are not stored it, just try to download it. Yeah, so my file finally is downloaded. So we have a message. Sorry, there should be for the Postgres the Windows version. Yeah, uh, I just uh, pasted the link above. Uh, for the Windows version, just try to postgresql.org slash download slash Windows. Uh, and I uh, don't know really if you see the chat, but try to find it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I'm pretty sure that I pass it for all participants. So, yeah. Okay. That's why I love the Mac OS. You. Yeah. And we just install it. Yeah. <laughs> now, okay, we need to wait a few seconds, but it's convenient enough. Yay. Cool. Okay. So we need to start it. Not the postman. Uh, oh, sorry. Not the website. What what is wrong with you? What's going on? Okay. Very fine Postgres. Yeah, you open. Yeah, as you can see, it's really popular <laughs> up 4,000 stars on the GitHub. Cool. So uh, for macOS users, we have cool features. We can select here the Postgres version, 
Also, we can define the port, but uh, by the way, this is default Postgres port. It's really simple, 5432, yeah. I don't know how they get the idea. Cool one. So, what we will use the default, the Postgres version 10 is just okay. And we just need to click in a slice. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, by default, the Postgres app for macOS will create for us a DB. Uh, it will be called uh, as your uh, macOS default user. For me, it's B Popovsky, it's like Boris Popovsky. So it also creates a user, uh, but we will we'll not use it. Just, just uh, try to explain you a few things. So let's test it. We will use the terminal. Yeah, we are the cool guys. We also use terminal. So uh, da -da 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 -da, the magic keyword is PSQL. Yeah. So it helps. It works for me. But Linux guys, sorry, but I <laughs> pretty much sure that you will get an error. Yeah, yeah. and it's just uh, ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Why you will get an error? Because by default, the PSQL uh, command uh, use the default user and default database. So if my user is Boris Popovsky, it just use Boris Popovsky user for Postgres and B Popovsky as a database. Uh, and uh, the, my uh, Postgres app by default created it, as I told before, but on Linux, it doesn't work so. So you will get an error if you, if you will just type the PSQL. So you can type the PSQL. Uh, you can make something like a su Postgres uh, because by default, the Postgres user will, uh, is just created. And then you can uh, use the PSQL without anything. But uh, by the way, how you can define your own user. Uh, for example, we can use the, we think like this, we can use, uh, da, 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 da. oh, sorry, the capital U. So this is how can you define the, the user in this, how you can define the database, the small d and also the Popovsky. Yeah, and also the port minus p. Da, da, da. So, uh, yeah. So by default, uh, the the PSQL command line inside looks like this. Also, it uh, you the host lo local host. Da, 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 da. Sorry. Yeah. So. This is how you can define the host. This is how you can define your port or database or user. But by default, you don't need to provide all of this. You can just type PSQL if you have all this setup. So sorry, we have some mm, questions here. Where is my Zoom panel? Where are you? Yeah, chat. Yeah, sudo su postgres or, post or just uh, su postgres and you will be logged as a postgres user and then you can just use psql for linux. Cool. So, no more errors with psql. Now you will understand, now you understand I, I hope how to interact with it. So, the next slide. So, we need a database. Yeah, it's pretty obvious. So just it's time to you to try to remember where you stored the dump we are sending to you. So, but yeah, you can download it from our cloud system. Uh, this is the old link. You probably can try to download it from here, but you can, you need to unzip it, uh, untar it, so it's not convenient. 
Yeah, you should uh, get your zip version from the our cloud system, and you just need to unzip it in the simple folder. So, just try to unzip it. Okay, but first of all, let's create a DB. We have in Postgres few ways to create DB. Uh, oh, also, by the way, I just forget. Uh, we need to do one more thing, installation. And here we have a magic, magic command line. So my quest guys, just try to use it. The Linux guys, I suppose you don't need this. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, so uh, the thing is this command will uh, just configure all the binary paths for our Postgres and we can use the binaries from the Postgres libraries. For example, like this, uh, this command line we can use just from regular terminal. This is the Postgres binary uh, small script called create DB and we just can define the DB name in our case, it will be P5 test, like pentalog test. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a little bit time for marketplace, yeah. <laughs> so, or we can do the old school style. We can log in into PSQL with uh, our Postgres or uh, sudo user and just use the SQL command line, create DB database. Okay, let's try the first one. Here we need to uh, refresh session in our terminal to make it work. So we have one more question, sorry guys. Uh, yeah, uh, Ibrahim Drama need to quit. She has, or he has an emergency, yeah. Be careful man, or girl, yeah. Just have a good time. Thank you for your time. Okay, guys, so let's try to create the No, okay. Uh, our magic command doesn't work. Why? I don't know why, and I don't want to investigate it right now. Yes, well. Yeah, so I just can use the second. Okay. Yay. So one more message in the chat. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just tried to use the create DB with a dollar sign. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> cool. So uh, probably we create we created our DB. Let's test it. Let's check it. Yeah. So the Postgres the command line PSQL have a lot of shortcuts. Uh, the first one is uh, reverted slash L. So it will list all the databases on our host. Uh, in our case, on our local machine. So we have uh, the Boris Popovsky, B Popovsky database, which was created by default. We have a Postgres database. This is default database uh, where the Postgres store all the necessary uh, information, all the statistic analytics, so all the stuff that need to work. Uh, also template zero, it's also some kind of Postgres internal database. And here is the R1, P5 test. But we have a problem. The owner of our database is Bipopolsky. Uh, it's not so convenient to have uh, the owner, the sudo user. So the next step for us, we will create the role or the user. Yeah, Postgres have two ways to create it. Uh, so the first one, we can create role and define that we want the role P5 user with uh, permissions like login. The first one permission, we need to, that our user can log in. 
And the second uh, permission it, uh, that it will use the password because uh, the Postgres have uh, a lot of authentication uh, possibilities. Not only with password, you can yes, use uh, zero or some things like that. The second one is more simple. You can create user. Uh, so user means by default the role with login permission. So it's just like a alias for role with login. Uh, so nothing special. You also need to provide a password to define it. <coughs> so we will be we will use the very secured password. It, yeah, it's password. Yeah, yeah, it's the best level of security. Okay, let's use one of these. Okay. Yeah, so role is created. So the next step, we need to change the owner owner or of our P5 test DB to uh, to user we just created to P5 user. Yeah, I am the master of copy paste. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. Okay, let's check it one more time. So now the owner of uh, P5 test database is P5 user. Yeah, it's just what we want. Sorry, I have uh, again question. Yeah, guys, uh, don't worry. You will receive the presentation, the PDF file by the end of <coughs> this webinar. So no worries. Yeah, you can <coughs> try it by yourself. Sorry. Yeah, so let's continue. It's data time. Yeah, sure. We need some data because let's check it. We can connect to our database. Uh, shortcut for this is C, C for connect. And we just need to define the database name. So uh, auto complete also works here. So. You are now connected to the database P5 test as user Boris Popovsky. So if you want to define the user with which you will connect, you need to make something like that. So now I'm uh, connected as a P5 user. So also we can do a shortcut. So uh, the DT shortcut will show uh, all the tables in our database, so uh, it says that did not find any relation. It's pretty much reasonable because we doesn't have anything in our database. So let's let's change it. Uh, we have one more binary from Postgres <coughs> Postgres library. It calls pg restore. This one is for uh, import database dams into our database. Uh, but just please don't use it for big dumps uh, more than 10 or 50 gigabytes because the Postgres has another way to import it. But for us, it's just fine. So we need just to log out from the PSQL and we can use it. Da, da, da. Oh, sorry. What? Yeah, PG restore minus D like in PSQL for database. Uh, we define P5 test. We want to import our data in our database, not another one. And we just need to define the way to our folder. I previously asked you to unzip your dump you just received from us into some kind of folder. So please define this folder. Users, Poski for me. Uh, work and DB, no, yeah, so, yeah, so for me it's done, let's check it, what do we have, C5 test and DT, yay, we have a lot of tables here, dun, 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 dun. 
So this is just a test, test database or for some kind of uh, DVD rental website. So don't be shy, try to kill it. I don't know, try, try to make something with this. Do you want to, you can just play wherever you want with that database, it's just fine. So, okay, so the next step, we will set up the ID for our database. So I will use my uh, beloved GoLand ID. Uh, you know, guys, it's pretty convenient to have uh, your database structure or your database queries uh, just uh, not far from your code. So that's why I use uh, not a separated application for uh, interaction with database, but my own ID. So uh, if you have a licensed ID from IntelliJ IDEA, in the view section, in two windows, you will have the database section. <laughs> you can enable it and you will have it somewhere. In my, in my case, it's here in the right corner. So if I click here, I have a uh, window for this project. I doesn't have any database connection. So I can just click plus here, data source. And here's enough, uh, enough big list of uh, database drivers. So it's DB2, it's H2, it's MariaDB, MySQL, Oracle, where you want, SQLite, Mm, probably even MySQL, yeah, MySQL. Okay, so we choose the PostgreSQL, the favorite one. So uh, it's just a name. Yeah, you can choose where you want. Probably webinar. Uh, the host is localhost for us. The database. This is just the default database on which will uh, connection be established. So uh, we can leave it as a Postgres. So the user in our case, it is P, P5 user. And the password is, do you remember it guys? This is really secured password, password. Uh, honestly, if you do it for first time, probably here you will get a message that you need to install the driver. Just click, click on it and uh, or here, oh yeah, here, driver. And driver will be automatically installed in uh, 30 seconds probably, so it's not a big deal. So here is the port, uh, it's default one, so that's just test connection. Yeah, successful, cool, apply. So the next step, we need to configure which databases and schemas we want to show. Because we honestly don't need the Postgres database here because it's just uh, useful for us. We want to use the P5 test and we just can type all the schemas. Okay, okay. So you're, you're basically you can choose all the databases if you want. Uh, probably if on your project there are many databases that you need, that's just okay. But for in our case, we just need the P5 test database. So what do we have here? Uh, we have here our connection webinar databases it's pretty obvious is databases for the you know, here is our database p5 test so what do we have here we have here uh the schemas i don't know i can use something like that oh uh, sorry guys yeah i can use this one yeah so uh cool <laughs> uh Okay, so the schemas, what is this, what does it mean? So the schemas is basically the default uh, SQL pattern. It's nothing special for PostgreSQL. It's really uh, in the, mentioned in the SQL documentation. So the schemas is some kind of abstraction above the, all your relations in your database. Uh, let's check it. So we have uh, information schema, 
PG catalog, PG term, PG test, and the public schema. So uh, you can imagine this schema is like a container uh, and in which you can store your tables and which you can store your indexes on all the stuff related uh, to the separated topic. So the most basically uh, use case for that, for example, you want to separate the uh, ORM or your framework uh, tables on and relations uh, from your business logic. <coughs> because uh, all of us know that, uh, for example, uh, ORMs in uh, PHP or in Java and Hibernate have a lot of uh, uh, their own tables on the relations and uh, it's some kind of mess when you open your database and you see the 100 of uh, tables and, I, and you just need one more. Uh, it's not, not convenient. So uh, the schema container can be private and or can be public. So uh, in our case, we have a public one and the name is for him is public. Yeah, it's pretty obvious. So the each container schema and uh, there's also empty. The PG catalog, it's also the Postgres way to uh, to interact with your database, to store the information, to store the uh, analysis and statistic of your database. So, but uh, in our case, we just want to interact with our public schema. So don't be afraid of schemas, <coughs> just really convenient functionality. Don't be shy, try to use it. Uh, try to separate your functionality, your business logic, and your framework, or uh, wherever you have ORM uh, tables. It will be just will uh, help you and just save you a lot of time. So, what do we have in our public schema container? We have a tables, yeah, but it's nothing special here. I will not <coughs> discuss here the obvious SQL things like tables like joins, like having group or all the SQL statements. So the tables in the Postgres, they're pretty much, pretty much the same like in other DBs. Yeah, uh, sure in the inside, the realization of them are different, but I promise you that we will not discuss it on that webinar. Just please wait for part three. <laughs> yeah, it's like just in Game of Thrones. The most interesting will be in the final part, uh, yeah. I don't compare myself with the uh, author of Game of Thrones, but yeah, <laughs> Postgres is also interesting thing. So, tables, just quick look. We have Hector, we have all our databases tables. So let's just try to fetch something from one of them. Mm, yeah, so uh, in uh, our ID, you just need to double click on the table to fetch first uh, 500 results. You can set up it. So, but we have an error. Uh, permission denied for relation actor. Yeah, it's just fine. It's working as expected. Uh, because basically, if you remember, we set for our user only the login and password uh, permissions. So our user doesn't have for beginning even the select permission. Yeah, and it's just cool. So yeah, so here's the structure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first step, yeah, here we go. <coughs> yeah, we have expected error. Can you believe it? The error can be expected, just like a snow in the winter. So what can we do with this? We just need to add some permissions to our user. But uh, why do we uh, make it like this? Because the first rule of uh, DB security, you should rework all the rights from the user and then grant them only when they need it. So if, if you work as a DBA or something like that in your company and you try to administrate your database, please rework all the rights from the users and just uh, give them wherever you only what they need for the queries for the work, don't uh, grant them all the, all the 
permissions and uh, especially don't grant them uh, the pseudo, the super user permissions. That's not secured at all. So uh, we want to make a select. So in our case, for example, the developer from our company uh, just write for us in the chat, say, oh, hey, hello, I need to select uh, permissions. We, okay, that's not a problem. We can copy paste it. Yeah, <laughs> we have a nice presentation for this. And we will just paste it here and execute. Yeah, the grant. So the select permission is granted for our user. Let's check it. Let's try to fetch it one more time. Yeah, it works. So uh, here's our table. It's nice, in my opinion, nice presentation of, what, of our that data. So here we have the query information. So here's the time of, exec of execution and things like that. But it's nothing interesting for us because tables, it's just a common uh, SQL functionality. The next one is more interesting for us. Uh, yep. The next one is views. So uh, let's check this one, actor info. So uh, it looks pretty much like a table, you can say. So it have a columns that we can, uh, uh, as a table, we can just select from it. So the query works just fine. So what's the difference? Okay, let's check. Let's check it. So we have shortcut for this uh, D plus and actor info. So uh, with that with that shortcut, we can get the insights of the view. So here is it. So inside the view, here is it, view definition, we have a query. Not the columns, not the statements, not nothing like that. We have a query. So uh, basically the view is just uh, some kind of uh, abstraction, not, 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 sorry, not abstraction, it's just an alias to a big, big query. If you have pretty much big query and you just uh, bored to type it uh, and you just want to save some space in your code, you can use just a view, just to make an alias to this query. It's just pretty much simple that you can execute every time this query, yeah, let me uh, copy it. So here we have our console. So you can execute this one on each iteration, on each code statement, or you can just execute the select, select, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so I suppose it's pretty much, pretty much obvious why uh, this functionality is, exists. So it's really, really convenient to use things like that. But uh, it's nothing special for us, just, just the allies on a query. But the cool thing that you can use one view inside of another view <laughs> and also you can uh, manipulate them, but uh, don't do that. Don't do pretty much recursion. Don't use the view and inside another view, inside another view, because uh, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio will not approve this in the Inception movie. So uh, just, it will be unreadable for uh, all the users from, from your team. Uh, sorry, we have a question. Yeah, uh, we have. <laughs> Someone like my joke about uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, thank you. It's Ilya. Thank you. It's my colleague from Pentalog. Cool. Okay. So uh, the next pretty much same functionality in Postgres, it's a materialized view. Uh, 
many of uh, the Postgres user are confused. Uh, which is the difference between view and materialized view? Okay, let me let me scroll my. So uh, yeah, here we have nice, brilliant explanation about the view. I copy pasted from Wikipedia. So if you want, you want to check it, yeah, the Wikipedia knows better than me. Actually, yeah, it's really so. Okay, yeah, you can you can read it where where we we send the presentation to you. So uh, yeah, we use views under the hood. That what we have inside our view. So the next step is materialized view. So what the difference? Uh, by the way, that's how we can create the view. Okay, let me show how we can create the view. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, so uh, to create the view, just before your query, here the query, you need to type create view actor info s and then just go to your query uh, nothing special just don't forget smellicon in the end of the your query and then just all so to create the materialized view you don't need much more than before you just need to add materialized view before the view word yeah sorry for for the repeatness yeah let's just copy it so yeah, okay, you can jump to console, new console, yeah. So here we have our query. It's pretty much, uh, yeah, yeah, just uh, copy it query from a uh, simple view and just uh, added here material view and little bit changed the name. I just added the prefix MV as a materialized view. So the query is absolutely the same. So let's just create it. Yeah, create. Yeah, we need to wait. Yeah, uh, eight milliseconds. So now we have here. So yeah, just uh, materialized view section appeared because previously we doesn't have any materialized view in our DB. So now we have it. Let's query it. Yeah. So it's absolutely same structure. We can check it. Yeah. So it's absolutely same structure in both our views. So yeah, material view is defined as a table which actually physically stored on disk, but it's really just a view of other database tables. So what does it mean? Uh, let's try to check it on a real uh, ex example. So let's uh, try to select one or another, and we will just compare the speed of the queries. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, we can remove it from here. Um, yeah, the next brilliant copy paste from me. So, oh. Yeah, as you can see, I have mad skills on copy pasting. So let's try to execute from, uh, first one is just from simple uh, view. Um, what's going on? Uh, sorry, I didn't get it. Yeah, so the output here we see forty three milliseconds for the select. Just try to remember it forty three. And the next one, uh, no. And the second one from uh, materialized view, uh, it's just thirty-one milliseconds. Yeah, uh, on my previous test, 
the difference was in two types, but for now it's just about 10 and with something millisecond, but we can test it one more time. Yep. 36 and here. Yeah, just strange. Okay, but <laughs> you should trust me. Ah, uh, yeah, we can, yeah, you know what? We can check it here. So, yeah, <laughs> my screen doesn't lie. So, for the, the previous one uh, on my test, uh, with uh, just a simple view, I had the uh, 100 and uh, in 19 milliseconds, and with materialized view, I had. 20 milliseconds, and that's pretty much uh, realistic queries time, so just trust me. So, yeah, you can ask what's going on, why on earth and who on earth will use this, those slow, simple views, and why, and actually why the materialized view is so much faster. Because, as I said earlier here, the materialized view is defined as a table which is actually physically stored on disk. So the materialized view has their own store. It's not just a simple allies for a query. Uh, it's, it is, it's some kind of allies for a query, but, but on the creation part, it selects everything from that query and store it physically on the disk. So it acts some, some kind of table. Probably the tem temporary table will be close enough term for this, but uh, PostgreSQL have uh, the temporary table functionality, so it's not uh, the same. They're pretty much, uh, pretty much the same, not, but not the same here. So, but it's really just a view of the database table. So. When, we, when you need to use one and when do you need to use another one. So when you need to data be very precise and fresh, you use view because it executes a query on every request. request. So that's why it's slower than a materialized view. It doesn't have a cache or a disk store or something like that. It, it uh, uh, executes your, your big query on each request. So when, you, when the speed is more important than the data freshness, you use materialized view. So, but by the way, there are, uh, so yeah, uh, by default, the materialized view will doesn't update your data. So it will store the data on the time you execute the creation query. So if you will have updates in your original tables, it will not attend and will not influence the data on the materialized, inside the materialized view. So uh, that's why uh, the data will not be uh, fresh or probably will not be consistent. But there are ways in the Postgres how to uh, update uh, the materialized view data, but you, can, you need to make it uh, with your hands. So it's not so convenient. So just remember, when you just need to uh, analyze for your query, you can use simple view. When you need to store your that data, maybe for just a statistic or something like that, you need to probably only once in a day refresh your data, you can use materialized view. So uh, we have a few questions in the chat, sorry. Uh, Thank you for the presentation. We'd like to have the PPT if it's possible, unfortunately I can stay. Yeah, uh, don't worry if you are leaving, you uh, sh for sure you will receive uh, the presentation. Uh, so we have a question on the Facebook. Uh, is the view also used for faster querying? Uh, yeah, as we discovered, no, the simple view will we'll never used for uh, faster querying, but materialized view, yeah, uh, obviously, yes. Uh, yeah, isn't there a cache involved in those queries? Yeah, the cache involved, some kind of cache involved in the materialized view. 
uh, uh, but this means that I must update the model. Yeah, you need to update your materialized view. So uh, there are ways you can use triggers. We can talk about the triggers uh, in a few months uh, later. So yeah, uh, the materialized view, you need to use it when the freshness of the data is not so important for you. Oh, yeah, <laughs> okay. Let's move on. The function and the precious procedures. So yeah, uh, another question from Sergey. Should shouldn't reading from disk be slower? Yeah, uh, just trust to Postgres. The Postgres really, really can uh, can read from the disk uh, fast enough. But uh, you should uh, take in consideration that you try to compare the reading from the disk from the table which can have, for example, uh, two billions of rows and uh, fetching from disk the data from one separated query, which probably have only a thousand uh, of thousand or, or rows, so it's not comparable. It's uh, pretty much obvious that uh, materialized view will be faster. Uh, another question, is there a kind of materialized view that is updated automatically anytime the tables is based uh, or no? Sorry, no. <laughs> it will not be a materialized view it will, if it will be updated uh, automatically on, on each uh, function uh, or on each table update. But I will show the way how you can fix this. So the function and procedures. Yeah, Postgres function also known as stored procedures. You probably all heard of, of them uh, because in another databases there uh, obviously the, exist uh, such kind of functionality. So it allows you to carry all out uh, operations that will normally take several queries and round trips in a single function within the database. Functions can be created in a language of your choice like SQL, like PSQL, PGSQL, it's just uh, PG, uh, just Postgres variant of PSQL, PL uh, language, even in C or the Python. Can you imagine it? You can write a function or in the Python in the Postgres, just a brilliant functionality. So uh, here is a simple example of a function or procedure, or you can uh, call it whatever you want in the Postgres. So just let me go to my ID. Yeah, sorry, no, okay. Now let me copy paste it again, yeah. So what do we have here? Create or replace function. I suppose it's pretty much obvious. We can create, but if the function already exists, we just will replace it. Yeah, it's nothing special. The function is a uh, key word for. Uh, then we have the function name. It's pretty much like in your favorite language, languages, for example, I don't know, Python, C, or Java, or PHP. So you have a function name, you have uh, the arguments, but uh, yeah, uh, in, our, in our case, we doesn't have any arguments. So uh, we just define which type we will return. We said that we will return integer as a totals. This is just a name, uh, sorry, the totals total. This is just uh, dollar signs uh, to define as a variable. So uh, we declare it total, type integer. And here is the function body. So it's just begin, just old, uh, I don't know, uh, Pascal, Pascal uh, style begin and end of the function. And inside we have select statement. So uh, this is, uh, this language is uh, PLG SQL, uh, but it also be, can be just simple SQL because inside the body of function we have just a simple SQL. We have select, count, uh, just, uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I suppose it's just fascinating function for you guys, but sorry. Uh, uh, select count into total in our variable from fill 
yeah it just uh, mm, we will return it so yeah it's a really cool function so yeah let's try to create it yeah we created our function so then let's try to select from it the the cool thing is that we can select from the function like from the tables we uh i will show it to you so we have here our number so total films there's the function name we can make an allies for it yeah it will be total wherever you want so it's just another way to encapsulate the query inside some kind of view or in this way it's in the function but uh, it's just a simple example because you can have you can your function can take uh, an arguments you can your function can be more com complicated so uh, in our db structure here we have a routine section where all the function are stored. So yeah, mm -hmm. here is our function. Yeah, when you just double click on it, you will get the create function uh, query and also some kind of uh, rights. The right thing, so yeah, just change change the owner to our user. Yeah, just ignore it. So we have a lot of functions here in our uh, test database. We can just uh, shortly check them. So for example, this function takes the arguments. So yeah, we define them. So here's the function name, here are the arguments. Yeah, it's just like your favorite language way. It also have a return statement. Uh, we define here a language as a SQL, as I told you before, because if you have just a simple SQL statement, it doesn't need to use PHP SQL or another language, but you can. So yeah, it's pretty much simple. We select, yeah, the function just return the films in the stock. So, uh, I, I suppose it's pretty much obvious functionality. You just need to be familiar with the functional procedures, procedures in the uh, common languages, programming languages, and you can handle it. Yeah, sure. So don't be shy, don't worry. It's just a simple functionality. Everyone can handle it. Just don't shy to try, don't hesitate to use the function inside the Postgres. It's really simple and convenient. Yeah. Yeah, don't worry, be happy. Thank you for comment. Yeah, for sure. So this, the next, yeah, here are the interesting thing. This is a brilliant functionality. Uh, trust me. Uh, sorry, one more message in the chat. Yeah, now, uh, the question is, is the cost, uh, the performance in using function, functions? Uh, in the just plain using of function, uh, it does, does not have any cost because it's just another uh, allies above the query. But if we will talk about the triggers, which we will do in the next section, uh, yeah, I will talk about the the performance issue. So just wait a little bit. So what is the triggers? Uh, PostgreSQL trigger is a function work it automatically whenever an event or uh, insert, update or delete occurred. So it's also pretty much obvious, I suppose. Yeah, so uh, basically we have, we have one trigger uh, inside our DB, so we'll not waste our time to create our own. So we'll just look on it. So uh, we have an, a an, uh, trigger, it calls last update, yeah. I suppose you already know about what do this trigger. So uh, create, uh, 
So let me explain you a little bit about the triggers. Uh, triggers contains two things. The one is the trigger function, the function which will be uh, triggered and uh, called after the event. The chosen uh, event will be invoked. So you have an, uh, some kind of listener in your table and you have a function which will be triggered after uh, your listener will be invoked. So it, yeah, it works like that. So we have our, in uh, our routine section, we have our trigger function. So last update is the function which will be called after the event invoked. So we have, and it will return the trigger. So this is the keyword for this. It will not just return the, the integer or something like that, it will return trigger and will do everything you need inside your body. So uh, also we'll, we can define your language. And in this case, we, uh, for real, we need the PLGSQL question because we have such interesting statement. New dot last update equals current timestamp, timestamp and return the new. So, uh, I suppose you already know about what's going on inside this function, but I will explain. The new keyword here, it's some kind of analog of uh, this or self uh, in our uh, languages, programming languages. For example, in Java or C++, it's this. In PHP, it's also this. Uh, in Python itself. So, yeah, it's some kind of so. Uh, here the new represents the table on which the trigger will be uh, triggered. I don't know how to. <laughs> so the, and the column last update in that table will receive the, the value of current timestamp and uh, we will return the table. So yeah, it's pretty much obvious. So sorry, we have, uh, Yeah, uh, how long it will last? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, this, uh, I mean, yeah, new here is not the table, it's a row. Yeah, thank you for correctness. Yeah, uh, it's some kind of table, but it's, uh, we deal with the row of the table. Yeah, yeah. So, the second part, yeah, another questions in the chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, too much questions, guys. Let me just finish the show and then I will try to ask them. So uh, here's another slide. So in our actor table, we can find, yeah, in our actor, we can find the last update before update. So here is the magic. So uh, on our table, actor table, we have our uh, event listener. So how would define uh, create trigger, last updated. Uh, here we define uh, when it will be invoked. So before update table, we can also use after. And the third uh, variant is instead of. So, so you can redefine the default behavior of the update. Uh, but in our case, we just before an update, uh, uh, the, the guy in the chat asked what about the transactionality. So here is the answer. Uh, uh, to store the data consistency, uh, you can choose when you want to uh, emit when you want to invoke your trigger function, when you want to update uh, that data, for example, in our case, in our uh, last updated column, before the update or after to store the data consistency. But uh, obviously the transaction isolation layer in the Postgres will deal with it by itself. 
So you don't need to worry if you if you set the uh, transaction isol isolation uh, level to the serialized. You don't need to worry. The PostgreSQL will handle it. So, but we will talk about the transaction uh, isolation levels and stuff like that in the next series. So, sorry, not today, guys. So we so here we have the before update on table actor for each row. So here we can define the statement, for example, we just choose the for each row, but here we have, we can have, for example, uh, for uh, each row where, uh, I don't know, um, some kind of, uh, for example, ID more than five, six or something like that. So uh, you, can, you can define here the, the whatever you want so but in our case we just want to uh, execute it for each row so and execute procedure procedure we just here type the name of our function yeah so things like that so okay let's go yeah the aggregations uh, the aggregations Another cool Postgres features because uh, all the probably all the databases have their own aggregations, but in the Postgres you can create your own custom aggregations. So let's check it. We have the aggregation section, rock concat. So yeah, we have the rock concat uh, aggregation. It's just uh, uh, an alias for a group concat function, we can find it here in routines. Yeah, so it's also just a simple function with a lot of cases. But yeah, yeah, as you can see, uh, here is another cool Postgres feature. You can use, use uh, the select case feature like in your favorite languages programming. So yeah. Sorry guys, so we, we are a little bit ran over out of time, so I will try to make it faster. So yeah, let's just try to execute this aggregation uh, and I will explain what does it mean. So yeah, for example, we have our group concat uh, aggregation. So uh, what, uh, what does it mean really aggregation? For example, MySQL, yeah, sorry for that. MySQL have uh, aggregations like uh, count, sum, max, mean, and things like that. So this, this those uh, function help you to aggregate information from your table, from your query. So, but here we can define our custom aggregation. For example, in that way, we want to aggregate all the descriptions uh, in the our table fields as one monolith text. For example, we need it for analytics. We don't want to select each row by each row and then in our PHP script just to make it as a plain big monolith text. We can just make it inside the Postgres and just select it as a one field. So let me just show it. Yeah, so uh, here we have text separated by, by comma. So we have one big monolith text. How it really works? So yeah, the, the group concat function just check if the description is null, then if description is two, Sorry, the variant. So if the string is okay, we just separate it with the comma and that's it. So we just, on each row, we just concatenate the second row and go on, things go on. So it's pretty much simple, just really, really convenient. Don't hesitate to visit the Postgres official website and just to check the, uh, the documentation, but we need to hurry up because we have so far a really, really fascinating functionality 
So uh, yeah, also we have here sequences. Here sequences is nothing interesting because sequences is just an uh, analog and of auto increment uh, in the MySQL, for example. Uh, so yeah, you just can uh, iterate. You can just uh, add. You can just multiply your sequences. Just yeah. It's some kind of auto increment with a lot of uh, building functionality. So yeah, you can also check the documentation. So yeah, the really fascinating functionality is CTE. Yeah, the CTE, uh, also known as common table expression, or uh, maybe you uh, heard of it, referred to as with clause. There's a general idea that allows you to create something somewhat equivalent to a view that only exists during the transaction. You can create multiple of those, which then allow you to clear building blocks and make it simple to follow what you're doing. Yeah, that, that, that's just a, a simple explanation, but let's see it in a real action. So yeah, what do we have here? A city in action, yeah, it's really nice naming for section. So yeah, let me just copy and paste it again. Yeah, I'm a professional, trust me. Yeah, we have it here. Yeah, so it start with a with word and then again, you have just an alias. Yeah, you can S like an alias for the next select statement. Uh, or update or delete or whatever you want. So here inside you can put wherever you want your query, your function, your view, whatever you want. So it will just have an uh, alias like this. So uh, in our in our case, we have another cool Postgres feature that we, we can return uh, the fields from update or delete or insert queries. So for example, if you have a case when you need to fetch all the IDs which were deleted, in PostgreSQL you can uh, handle it simple as I don't know what. So you just type return and the film ID and on each update it will return the updated ID. So in our case, uh, we have yeah pretty much interesting update statement, so yeah. <laughs> The second one, so yeah, this is just a updated rows. Imagine it is a view, like an like in a view. So the next view is also yeah, but we just select from film table all we need. So it's rated film films rated above the four. So after all of these, so we define it to our views. We have a select statement we can, where we can. Uh, select from those views. Yeah, we can uh, actually act with them and interact like with the real tables. So we can join them, yeah, and things like that. So let's just try to execute it. Yeah, so once again, permission denied for relation team. Remember what I said, you need just to grant uh, the, the rights that you need. So in that, in that case, we need the, an update Right, so yeah, we'll just grant an update permission for our user and it should work. Yeah, so uh, here is it. So uh, our CTE update with the select inside, with select above, above all of that, just return uh, for us results. It's really, really brilliant functionality, trust me guys. This is just a simple example. I just uh, doesn't have enough of fantasy to, to create a really uh, cool uh, city for our test database. But trust me, uh, in my projects, I lose, use a lot of them and they're uh, usually they're in four, five times bigger than this and four, five times more uh, yeah, uh, useful. Yeah, <laughs> just trust me. So uh, yeah. This is it. It's just a couple of views. You can create uh, how much you want of them. Four or five. Uh, also, you can uh, select or so you can uh, select from previous uh, 
view inside the next one. So here, for example, we can select uh, from previous view. So, so you can uh, step by step handle your data. Uh, for example, you can uh, realize here something like map reduce or things like that. So yeah, it's just a fascinating functionality. So, but the next one is much greater. So yeah, only here the you can hear the name in the recursive city. Yeah. So uh, I suppose all of you knows what recursion is mean. So it's nothing special for our programmers, developers, but for databases, it's really something new. So what does it mean and what does it do? So first of all, let's just try with a simple example. Yeah, uh, you can uh, write, I can read you this, the boring, boring uh, description. A recursive query is a query that refers to recursive CTE. Yeah, but no, it's just too boring for us. Okay, so what do we have here? Uh, this is just a loop. It really pretty much similar with the, our programming language loop, something like, uh, uh, yeah. Da, da, da. So yeah, this is pretty much the same. So in our case, this is the anchor, the basement of our loop. Here we define that E is equal to zero. It's yeah, this part. So the next part after union, the keyword here uh, is union. This is the second part where we can define that we want to iterate and just uh, add one to every iteration. And we just here put our statement that E should be less than a 10. So yeah, nothing special. Let's just try to query it. Yeah, so we get the results from zero to 10. Yeah, it's, it's that what we expected, I suppose. So yeah, we have a message in the chat, sorry. Yeah, so, uh, but this functionality is, was created not for the loops and not for the iterating uh, uh, numbers because the Postgres has a more convenient functionality for this, trust me. But we have more interesting examples. So we need to create new table because uh, unfortunately, to show you the real power of the recursive uh, uh, CTE, we need to, an hierarchical uh, table uh, where one row is referenced to another row with the parents, sub rows with the child and things like that. So for that reason, we will create our new table here. Yeah. Yep, and insert inside the table. What do we need? So yeah, everything just works fine. Let's check if the new geo table was created. Yeah, here it is. So uh, in that table, we have the parent ID. So the earth is the, the much higher level in our geo table. So the second is Eurasia, it's like a continent. Uh, North America is also a continent. Then the Euro is just an abstraction above the Russian Germany. Yeah, <laughs> trust me, Europe is just an abstraction. Yeah, it's just a nice political move from my side. So uh, also the Europe have inside your Germany and Russia have, uh, Inside also in Russia, Russia inside here Moscow and things like that. So just a hierarch hierarchical structure. We have a parent with a child. So uh, the real major case when you need to select, for example, uh, 
everything inside the euro. It's just a real use case from the left. Uh, so what, why, how can you do? In the old way, you will fetch all the data and then filter it inside your PHP script, for example. And then with the help of four, five, four loops, you will just structure that data. This is the old way. Trust me, I did things like that in my previous experience. So, but now we can just use simple and just beautiful functionality to deal with it. So here we have, here we, we have pretty much same structures. With recursive, select, this is the basement. As you, as you remember, it's just our, for example, E equals zero. So we just defined that we will have three fields inside. Uh, we select it from our database and put the statement that we want the parent where four, uh, just the four, mm -hmm. it's a euro. So we want everything inside the euro. After that, union all, uh, you can just here put in the, just simple union, it's just a useless word, yeah. So uh, after that, here is the recursion part. So yeah, you just can say that you want to select every, every row from the base statement. Uh, and from that result, you will fetch their children and from their children, you will fetch their children until the nothing will be returned. So that's how it works. And then you just uh, select it from, from uh, R. So let's just trust it. Uh, try it. So yeah, we have Russia, Germany, Moscow, St. Petersburg, and Berlin. So yeah, we have everyone inside the euro. Something like that. So uh, also we can simply here, for example, at the level, for example, we can type something like that. And here we have Da, da, da. Yeah, let's try to execute it. Yeah, so uh, here are the levels. So Russia and Germany for us is the first level. This is the countries and Moscow, St. Petersburg and Berlin, it's the cities. So they're on the second level. So you can somehow imagine how it works. So on the first iteration, it will get uh, everything from that query, but on the second iteration, it, it will get everything from that query and work with it. So it's, yeah, it's just a SQL recursion. So, yeah. Okay, guys, so let's check what we have. Yeah, recursion for EU. Yeah, you can check it on my presentation. So what's next? Please guys, don't hesitate, don't shy to check the official docs. They are really, really nice written. So yeah, this, they are really useful. And basically, and uh, try to use it. Try what you hear from me today. Try to use it in your real life projects. So yeah, just to practice, 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 and practice. And yeah, wait for the next webinar. Uh, it will be about, about the query optimization, monitoring, logging, and another cool stuff. So yeah, uh, question and answers time. But I suppose I answered a lot of questions, but if you have uh, something, you just can type it. We will store it, and probably I will answer later on them with a email on the, or with a big post about this webinar. So yeah, just don't be shy and ask some questions. Yeah, uh, so the guys asking to add the replication uh, uh, to my next webinar. Yeah, it's a great idea, uh, but uh, we will discuss only the master-slave replication because the master-master replication, uh, it's a really difficult topic. So yeah, guys, also don't forget to leave some kind of feedback, please, because it's really important for us. It's really an experiment. Uh, 
This is the first of the many, I hope, webinars in our near future. We have a lot of topics to discuss. So yeah, just please leave some feedback. It was bad, good, the sound was bad, or maybe uh, the presentation was too boring, or maybe the presentator was too political when he said that uh, their, their Europe is just an abstraction, something like that. Don't be shy. Tell, tell us what do you think about uh, us, about our presentation, and yeah. So, and yeah, also don't forget about the questions. Uh, yeah. So, also, yeah, thank you guys for, for all of you to visiting this webinar. Thank you, thanks to all my colleagues from Pentalog for helping organizing this event. So yeah, we just, I uh, hope, have a great time together. Uh, and I'm looking forward to hear from you and to meet you in another webinars. So yeah, uh, don't worry, uh, all your questions will be stored, I suppose. So yeah, I will stop to share my screen. Uh, yeah, no. Yeah. So yeah, we will try to store all your all your questions. So yeah. So guys, thank you. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening, day or morning.